This video is sponsored by Skillshare. This is the smallest and cheapest autofocus lens ever made. And prior to the release of this lens, it was a commonly held belief that you could not make a lens this small and still get autofocus. It's a full frame lens, but it e works equally well on crop sensor cameras. Now, the first thing you should be asking when you see a lens of this price and this size is what compromises have been made. And immediately you're gonna wonder, is this lens sharp? And the truth is, it is surprisingly sharp. But this is absolutely not a perfect lens and some compromises have been made and I will cover those in the video. Ultimately, I think this is a shockingly good lens. I've been using it all the time, specifically because of how small it is and the image quality is more than good enough. This is a new release lens by Viltrox. It's the 28 millimeter F4.5. They're calling it the chip lens. At the time of shooting this video, it's only available at two different retailers. I expect there will be more to follow, but I'll put some links in the description down below to the two retailers that have it in stock right now. And Viltrox did send this lens out at no cost to myself to allow me to make this video, but they had no say in the making of the video. This really has become one of my most used lenses recently, and that's just because of the size and the focal length. And you look at how small it is, this is a lens that can literally fit in your pocket. And most of the time when I'm going out and testing lenses, I will have one lens on my camera. I don't wanna bring any spare lenses, but often that might be a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter. And those focal lengths are only good for certain things. And if I'm out in the city and something exciting happens and I need a wider angle lens, if I haven't brought anything with me, I don't have anything to get that shot. But being able to have a 28 millimeter lens that fits in your pocket really adds some versatility when I'm walking around. The other thing about this, if you've got a full frame camera with crop sensor mode, you essentially have a 28 millimeter lens and a 40 millimeter field of view in APS-C mode. And I also like 40 millimeters as an APS-C lens. So you're hitting two of my favorite focal lengths between 28 millimeters and 40 millimeters. Now, as I said, this is an ultra sharp lens. And I think the first thing you're gonna think when you're looking at a lens of this price and size is that it's not gonna be sharp. That's absolutely not the case, particularly in the center of frame. This thing is incredibly sharp. Now, keep in mind, this is starting at an F4.5 aperture and you have no aperture control. That's all you've got. And starting at F4.5 versus 1.4 or 2.8 does give you quite an advantage as far as getting decent lens sharpness. I will also say in the corners of frame in full frame, mode shooting as a 28 millimeter lens the corners get a little bit messy but if you're shooting in crop sensor mode or with an APS-C sensor camera it is quite sharp across the entire frame but overall it is a very sharp lens the two places that you're going to see optical sacrifices are heavy vignette and flare or lack of contrast in some situations, particularly if you're shooting into the sun. Now, the heavy vignette is going to be noticeable or more noticeable when you're shooting in full frame mode or with a full frame camera, and it does get quite dark once you get to the corners. And the flare is something that when you have really heavy flare hitting the lens, there's not a whole lot you can do about that in editing. But there are some situations where you're just shooting and there's a little bit of light coming in the direction that you're shooting and you'll get a slight lack of contrast in those images and that's actually very easy to fix in editing. And the heavy vignette is also very easy to fix in editing as well. And what I found is I can correct those two little optical flaws in most situations just using Lightroom, and it makes this lens look like a much, much more expensive lens. And I know not everyone has the skills or confidence to adjust these things in Lightroom, but it's actually quite easy if you have a little bit of knowledge. And the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare, actually has a number of Lightroom classes that you can take and it's very easy to upgrade your skills and with those simple classes you can actually learn to make this lens look like a much more expensive lens and I've used these techniques in this video to edit all the photos that you've seen and you can actually take the same classes and for the first 500 people that use my link in the description you will receive one month free trial at Skillshare to get started. And not only do they have classes on Lightroom editing, they have classes on landscape photography, portrait photography. There's a huge amount of classes for all different skill levels. And just in case you don't know who Skillshare are, they are the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts. And they can allow you to take your career or side hustle to the next level. One of the other things you might think about a small inexpensive lens like this is that it's going to feel cheap, but it doesn't at all. And it's actually quite weighty for how small it is. Now you don't even have a lens cap. You have this sort of little slide cover that covers the front element of the lens. The body 
plate is all plastic, but then you have a metal lens mount at the rear, and you even have a USB-C port built in for updating the firmware, which I didn't even expect that you could sort of fit that in. You are not going to have any filter threads at the front, and you have no ability to use a lens hood, but that's fine. This is just a small pocketable lens that you close down, put a rear cap on it, and you can throw it in your pocket. There are a couple of additional things that you should know about this lens. And the first is when this lens is not connected to a camera, the lens elements in the lens are actually floating and they will go up and down as you can see when I'm turning the lens up and down. This is not because the lens is inexpensive or because it's using cheap autofocus motors. In fact, just the opposite. The autofocus motors in this are very similar to much higher end lenses. And I've owned lenses that cost thousands of dollars that the lens elements have the same behavior. But if you haven't used a lens like this before and you see those lenses moving when it's not connected to the camera, you're probably gonna think there's something wrong or it's broken. No, that's just how it works. The other thing to be aware of is as you will see on most lenses, this has these little ridges here, and generally that allows you to set the lens down with the back of it facing down on a hard surface, and then that rear lens element will not touch the surface and actually scratch the lens. In this case, when that lens element drops all the way down, it will hit the ground if you put the lens face down. And the first copy of this lens I got sent had a couple of little marks on it. Now, I wasn't sure if it came from the factory that way or if it was in my use, but I have a feeling it was in my use because when I was using it, I often look and, and just set the lens down face down like this, just a bad habit, particularly with this one, you are gonna mark up the lens. So what you wanna do is you just wanna shut that front element down like that and set it on the surface like that when you're switching lenses. Looking at the autofocus performance, for stills, I think it is quite good. Sometimes there is a huge amount of focus breathing and this will give the lens a little bit of problem when it's trying to focus near to far because the lens is both zooming in at the same time that it's trying to focus. But once it nails focus, it locks on, it's pretty steady. I do find the video autofocus can be uncertain at times and can pulse. Now, I don't know if this is something that will be updated in a firmware, but I think the performance is sufficient for a lens of this size and price point. Now, at the time of shooting this video, it's only available on Sony E-mount. I do expect that we will see more mounts to come. I'm hoping Nikon Z at least and maybe, maybe Fuji X, but that remains to be seen. Chromatic aberration is little to none, almost non-existent, and longitudinal chromatic aberration is very, very minimal. Probably one of the biggest optical flaws you will see is the crazy flare performance, particularly if you've got the sun just blasting right into the front of the lens. You get these just insane sort of flares and desaturation. Now, if you work to avoid the worst of the flares or the worst of the direct light, all you'll get is slightly lower contrast, of which I said that you can easily correct in editing. One of the interesting features of this lens is the eight pointed sun stars. And that is created by just uh, something I've never really seen on a lens before. And that is that there is a mask at the front of the lens, an eight pointed mask, which creates a situation where it gives you these eight pointed sun stars. The other thing it does is it gives you that geometric shape bokeh or background blur. So if you see out of focus areas, which you only get when you get very close to something, you do get this geometry in the out of focus bright highlights or bokeh balls. The close up image quality is great. You do have a quite long minimum focus distance, a little bit longer than I would like, particularly for a 28 millimeter lens, but it is quite sharp when you do use that minimum focus. The sharpness overall in a full frame camera is excellent in the middle and worse or softer in the corners. And on APS-C, it's near perfect from the center all the way to the corners because you're sort of eliminating the use of the worst part of that lens. And the bokeh and background blur is reasonably smooth when you get it, when you get close to something. I think sort of busy out of focus areas aren't rendered too badly. I might call it a six or a seven out of 10. And you do get that unusual geometric shape bokeh in the out of focus highlights. And so I think this is an excellent photography lens. I don't know if it would be my first choice as a video lens because there is a little bit of pulsing and it's a little bit uncertain when it comes to video autofocus. And you have no ability to manual focus because there is no manual focus ring on this tiny little lens. But I will say two of my favorite focal lengths for photography are 28 millimeters and 40 millimeters. I actually think they're both more interesting than the 35 millimeter focal length. And I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is a sub $200 
dollar 40 millimeter lens also made by Viltrox and I think it could be a great budget pairing for your full frame or crop sensor camera those two lenses are going to cover a wide range of uses